so um, the research that I'm doing is really about um, labor rights and sustainability in global supply chains. And uh, this, the paper that uh, is coming out in this journal is a summary of a part of that research. So uh, the basic uh, story here is that uh, private regulation, that is companies have uh, created codes of conduct for their supply chain, for their supplier factories. Uh, and the factories are expected to follow these codes of conduct. And the codes I identify, you know, uh, certain minimum labor standards that should be followed, as well as, you know, uh, certain environmental standards that should be followed. <clears throat> so I am focused uh, primarily on the labor side of things. And this model of what we call private regulation or private voluntary regulation by companies has uh, gone on for about 25 years, um, uh, starting with Nike, who was accused of sweatshops in its supply chain and created this model to solve, to address those issues. But now it has spread to almost every uh, industry and almost every global company that has a supply chain has a code of conduct on labor for its supply chains. Now, because this is um, done by companies, um, you know, they don't, companies are not obligated to share the data with the public uh, about how well labor rights in the supply chain uh, are followed. Uh, and and we, we hear of these uh, uh, occasional awful stories about uh, the Rana Plaza factory collapse in Bangladesh that killed uh, 1,300 workers. And, you said, and, and it turns out that, that fact, those factories also had a code of conduct that the major brands had instituted and those factories were inspected or audited to see whether they're conforming to the code of conduct. And those factories got a passing grade from, from the auditors. So, uh, but yet this, this uh, disaster happened. So the question is how, you know, it raises the question about just how effective these are. So uh, we've had, some researchers uh, do some small bits of evidence, uh, small bits of uh, uh, research, which means that they, when I say a small bit, it means that they might study one company and one supplier factory. And they, you know, they've made arguments about, well, you know, this private regulation model is working. Uh, you know, generally wages have gone up in, in the factory, but, uh, you know, maybe uh, all of the workers' rights, like freedom of association and collective bargaining or freedom from child labor discrimination is harder to assess, right? Uh, so we have several case studies that have come up with good or bad uh, uh, results. Uh, but in general, uh, the conclusion from the case studies is that, hey, it doesn't, doesn't quite work uh, or it doesn't really improve labor standards that much. So my work uh, is to sort of get empirical evidence from companies about uh, how this is working. And uh, it turns out that I'm the first one to have assembled uh, empirical evidence from a large number of companies, uh, private regulation programs, which were shared with me by an auditing firm. And uh, in this process, I have come to several conclusions that, that the, the, and the conclusion that matters for the purpose of this paper is that uh, you know, freedom of association, which is a core fundamental human right, um, is the one area in which there is the least amount of progress in, in private regulation, which means that a majority of the world's supplier factories supplying to global companies, particularly in the apparel industry, there is a, a not um, the workers, those workers do not have the right to freedom of association. And in many cases, supplier factories uh, oppose the formation of unions. Now, you know, this kind of research is very uh, common in my field, which is in labor relations, uh, the discipline of labor relations and sociology and political science. Uh, so we look at labor rights in global supply chains, which is very different from what uh, people in the supply chain management field, which is where this article is published, uh, focus on. Those uh, folks tend to focus on 
the eff efficacy of supply chain management and how to make a supply chain more efficient uh, and, and so on, but they don't necessarily focus on, you know, sustainability in terms of labor rights in the supply chain. And so this is what brings uh, my field and my paper to the supply chain management audience, which is very much focused on the efficiency of production, the efficiency of logistics, and the efficiency uh, by which uh, that supply chain is managed uh, in order to increase the profitability uh, to the companies uh, that uh, that <clears throat> that operate them. So, uh, so this uh, this effort by the editors of the journal is to actually bring these two uh, different fields together in some way. And my paper is one of several that uh, um, is an example of that. Uh, I think that when um, I was invited uh, to write this paper. Uh, uh, you know, it, <clears throat> I didn't necessarily have to do any new research because this was part of the research that is ongoing uh, at uh, uh, in my project, which is uh, situated at Cornell University. But um, I think that uh, the reason we were asked was was that within the field of supply chain management, which itself is quite a large field there is a subset of people who focus on the sustainability and uh, both um, environmental and social sustainability. And what uh, that uh, group has found is that the, the supply chain management field perhaps doesn't pay as much attention as it should on, on, on labor issues within the, uh, which uh, they refer to as social sustainability. So um, uh, this paper that I have written along with others in this special issue, I think, are geared towards promoting that, that dialogue between supply chain management researchers and uh, industrial relations researchers so that uh, we have a greater focus on social sustainability of supply chains, particularly after COVID-19, which provides the right opportunity because now um, supply chain managers are sort of not only focusing on supply chain uh, uh, efficiency, but they're also focusing on supply chain resilience and supply chain resilience uh, does require attention to sustainability issues. Uh -huh.